Hey YouTube, today I'll be going over Minwax's high performance wood filler with you. If you haven't used this product before, it's primarily used to fill and fix rotten wood. Now it makes this brand of filler and other epoxy based fillers like it, especially nice in my opinion, is it's weather and rot resistant. So you not only can use it on interior projects, but exterior projects as well. Today I'll actually be using it to patch some old screw holes that I have in my deck. This 12 ounce can only costs about $13 at Lowe's, uh, which puts it a little bit cheaper than the JB Weld and Bondo equivalent products, but in my opinion it works just as well. If you've ever used an epoxy based product like it before, it essentially works the same way. They give you a little bit of hardener and a can of putty. When you mix the two together, it creates a hard plastic like finish. Um, the reason they only give you this little bit of putty is because a little goes a long way. The instructions call for adding one part hardener to 16 parts putty. Um, to open it, all you need is a putty knife or a 5-in-1 tool or screwdriver or something like that. and It opens just like a paint can. And right away, you'll notice an extremely harsh smell that comes from this putty. If you have one, I highly recommend using a respirator. I'm not today, but I'm also outside where I'm well ventilated. Before you begin to mix the hardener and the putty together, make sure the surface that you want to prepare is ready because as soon as you mix these two things together, it's going to harden in a few minutes. You don't get much working time. The instructions say that you get 10 minutes, but I've really not had it last longer than five or six myself. Before you get started, there's two things you're going to want to have nearby. The first is a plastic putty knife, or in my case, a spatula. Um, and the reason why I prefer plastic is because it makes the cleanup process so much easier. I'll show you guys at the end what I'm talking about, but cleaning this putty off of metal is kind of difficult. The second is just a piece of scrap cardboard. Um, think of this as your painter's painter's tablet where you'll be mixing the putty and the, the hardener together. Now Minwax um, recommends mixing 16 to 1 uh, ratio, but I'll show you guys the trick that I use that works pretty well every time. I'm going to go ahead and mix it now and then show you guys uh, how to apply it later on in the video. But essentially just take a decent amount of putty. Don't take too much because remember you only have five or six minutes to work on this stuff so you're probably not going to have enough time to do a, a large filling with this. Um, the amount I have here is a pretty good amount. Um, it'll, it'll patch a couple of screw holes that I need to do. So once you've got a pretty um, circular blob there what I like to do is instead of actually measuring or weighing the one part hardener to 16 part putty is I like to just start on one end of the circle and make a straight line going down and usually that will be close enough to the amount that you need to to make it work. So once you've done this, you've got your, the clock's ticking, you've got to start going. What I like to do is just flip the product on top of itself like this and kind of mix it around. One thing I don't particularly like about this brand is you never really know when you've uh, completely mixed the product together. Bondo has a product that um, has a white putty with a red filler and you know you've thoroughly mixed the product when the putty turns um, pinkish in color. With this you just kind of have to eyeball it. Okay so that looks to be about mixed pretty well there. Um, what I'm going to do is take you guys out back and show you how to apply it to the uh, screw holes. My deck now and as you can see these are the holes I'm going to fill. One, two, three. Um, they're small enough that I probably could have used a caulk but by using this putty, it'll last a little bit longer than the caulk would. To apply it, there's really not much to it. The way I like to do it is just smear across. I'm going to apply a little pressure just to fill it into the hole as much as I can. 
And again, as you'll see, there'll be some over spreading to this, but it's okay because we'll come back and sand it off later. I'm just going to apply a little bit more than what's needed. That way I can come back and sand it off later. And really form it how I want. Okay, so it's only been like two or three minutes, but you can already see that this putty's kind of losing its putty form and becoming more of a solid. Um, I'm just going to clean off the edges right now, that way I don't have to sand as much later. I want to make sure that I leave that hole intact, because I don't want to have to reapply. Although, if you do have to reapply, it's fine. This stuff not only sticks to wood, but it'll stick to itself. One thing I particularly like about this is that whatever you apply, it's going to be there when it's hardened. It doesn't shrink, doesn't evaporate, none of that. Alright, so I let the hardener settle for about 50 minutes, which is about the time it needs to cure. And I went ahead and sanded it down flush to the wood. I wanted to show you guys what the final product looks like. As you can see, you can tell where the holes are still. It doesn't blend in with the wood. So if that's an issue for you, you're going to have to paint or stain the area to match the surrounding. Um, it's one downside, obviously, to using this product versus um, natural wood. But this will last for five, six years easily before it starts to crack. Here's another project that I'm using the wood hardener on. Uh, this is a door jam and before I replaced this section with the wood hardener, it was pretty rotted out, which these door jams rot out all the time because of they're using untreated lumber. Some of the newer houses will have plastic or PVC um, trim, but mine's, my house is 20 years old, so they were just using normal untreated lumber. But I wanted to show you this project just because uh, it kind of displays how well you can shape the putty to match the surrounding wood. I'm going to patch a few of these holes that I missed on the previous step and then paint it white so that it blends in and it won't ever rot out again. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I like to use a plastic putty knife when working with this stuff just because it makes the cleanup process so much easier. With this, all you need to do is bend it a few times, and you can bend it just fine because it's plastic, it won't break it, and the putty kind of tears right off, falls right off with it. If you were to use a metal putty knife, you'd really have to sand it or file it off just because it binds to metal almost as well as it does wood, so it's not coming off by just scraping it or tearing it like it does on this plastic one. Real quick, just want to go over the positives and negatives of this product. To start with, it's easy to work with. You can form it and shape it to the surrounding wood. And while it doesn't blend in with the wood, if you're okay with painting, uh, it, it can hold paint and stain just fine. Um, it hardens pretty quickly, uh, and and when it does harden, it'll get to a plastic finish, usually harder than the wood itself. Um, it lasts a long time. You can use it on interior or exterior projects. Uh, like I said, I haven't used it on, on interior projects myself, but I'm sure it lasts even longer. Um, kind of the downsides to it, other than the harsh smell, it's just kind of messy to work with so you gotta be careful what you apply it to or with because it'll stick to almost any rigid surface. In general I think it's a good product a good substitute for some for a small or medium sized project rather than going and replacing the entire piece of wood that you're working with you can pick up a can of this for thirteen dollars and um, make pretty good work of it. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If so, leave a like. Thanks.